Are you feeling a little bit insecure about getting older, aging, maybe wrinkles, gray hair, thinking that life is over because maybe you're 35 or past 30, 40, 50? Well, I'm making this video for you today to specifically talk about aging with grace and how to do it. I myself am pushing almost 40 now. I'm happier than I've ever been, more fulfilled than I've ever been, feel better than I've ever felt, more successful than I've ever been. And when I look forward, life keeps getting better and better. And when I'm frequently asked, would I go back? Would I want to be five years or 10 years or 20 years younger? My answer is always hell no. I love where I'm at. I love where I'm going. And I'm enjoying every moment of it. And let's get into it today because I want to talk about specifically some things that you can do to shift your perspective on this thing. All right. And I'm going to go in random order. And these are just some things that are working for me that have helped me absolutely. Number one is this. All the mistakes that we've made in our past, you need to come to terms with them, accept them, and move on. You are where you are today because of the sum total of all the decisions and actions that you've taken up until now. Now, if you're not satisfied with it, or you still have some sort of lingering trauma or whatever it is, you got to handle it, close that chapter in the book, and then move forward. Because if you continue to get older year by year, you know, 35, 40, 45, 50, and you keep carrying more weight and more weight, and more burdens, and more burdens, and more burdens, it's just gonna get worse, and worse, and worse. As an adult, it is up to you to handle these things. Whether you do specialized therapy, you get your certifications in hypnosis and NLP, and you go to master practitioners and they help you, whatever you choose. Again, I'm not a doctor here or anything, I'm not gonna recommend specifically what to do, right? I've shared on my channel, my journey and what I've done to improve, especially mentally, right? Emotionally, spiritually, and physically. But it's different for everybody. Everyone has a different past. Everyone has things that they're dealing with. So we have to be able to effectively close those chapters and move on. Otherwise, again, it's like you're adding a ball in a chain to you. And every time it's something new, it's another ball in a chain and another ball in a chain and another ball in a chain. And eventually, you just get so bogged down, you feel stuck. And emotionally, you feel congested. And it's just not good. Right. And I, I find that and people that I'm dealing with are around my age, like almost 40 and older, that seems to be a very um, big point that's holding them back as we start to have conversations. Right. Here's number two is. Even though we're getting older, we can still keep a very youthful spirit. So let, let's look at our demeanor and how we live. What's associated with being older? Right. Overweight, balding. Right. Lazy don't want to move, not fun, boring. Like think of all the traditional stuff, even though that stuff may not necessarily be true. We see it a lot and that message is ingrained in us, right? So when I say keep your youthfulness or go the opposite way of what I just said, I'm referring to not falling into that trap. I remember when I would hang out with some of my family, right? I'm really the only one in my family that doesn't have kids. And Whenever we'd have like a family gathering, I'd go visit my family in South America. Like I would sit with the kids, I'd eat a little bit, then I'd go play with them because I had energy and I wanted to be around them because they moved and they had life and they laughed and they giggled and they told stories and they ran around and the adults would just kind of sit there and drink and, you know, bitch and complain. And I didn't want to do that. If I had to choose between sitting at the table with the adults and bitching and complaining versus running around with the kids, I'm going to run around with the kids. Additionally, when I work out, I have younger people around me, right? It's part of my peer groups are the athletes and the younger people, or even the people who are around my age, who are still active and keep that youthfulness to them. Same thing from an emotional and spiritual standpoint, whether at the professional level, the athletic level, or everything else. I have people around me and in my proximity, and I run companies and all this other stuff where that's what I bring in, and that's what I surround myself with. Enthusiasm, excitement, life energy, optimism, desire for more, focused on progress and evolution. And I think that second piece that I'm describing right now, a lot of people don't realize, hey, the people around you might just be average, or they might be the people who sit there and gossip and complain, but you may be so numb to it that you haven't really stopped and said, hey, like, what's going on? What's going on? Right? That's a big one. And that one for a lot of people is challenging because they may realize, man, I have to potentially stop spending time with certain people or cut certain people out of you know, my life. And you may have to. Now, is that a choice you're willing to make? Because if you don't, 
You have to accept what comes with those consequences. Just something to think about. Here's the third one. View life as in stages. Meaning from birth to 10 years old, that's a phase, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, right? Now, what I'm giving you isn't an exact science, but think of it that way, right? A generation, 10, 20 years, right? Phases of life. You know, I would say up until 30 or 40, we're still kind of learning and developing. And you don't really hit your stride probably until, you know, probably 30s and 40s for a lot of people, especially the men. But that's been lost in translation because of the fake reality that we see on social media for the most part and on the news and the TV and mass media, whatever, the all those things, right? Embrace the stages, man. Like right now, pushing 40, I'm, I'm literally transitioning to and probably have already become the OG. I'm cool with that. I already live my adolescent days and my teens and my 20s and even my early 30s. I'm now in my late 30s, almost 40. Cool. I see it as a different stage of my life, but I view it from the proper perspective. I look and converse with people who are 18 and 25 and even 30, and I can see a difference. I'm intellectually more developed, socially a lot more savvy, have a lot more knowledge, a lot more success. Financially, I'm on a different level, right? Different stage. If you're watching this and maybe you're younger watching this, if you're 20 and you don't have a lot of money, it's okay. You will later on. You just don't have it now. Start working now, and eventually you'll have it. Don't look at me and be like, oh, shit, he's got way more. I'm almost twice your age, dude. I didn't really get my shit together and start to build income and get into my financial stride in, until my late 20s, early 30s. I got into real estate at 28. I did very well right away, and I've been in it for 11 years, but it took some time, right? I didn't really hit my stride for two or three years. So I was already in my 30s by the time I really started making money and multiple six figures and all that. I wasn't 18 years old. So when you look at life in these stages, you learn to embrace them for what they are. And you step into that with more confidence and a realization of I'm here. There's nothing wrong with it. We have this, this uh, and this could be the next point. There's like this message Right? And this is where you need to be able to block out and filter out a lot of this nonsense. There's like this emphasis on wanting to be young forever. Why? Just like youth has its positives, it also has its negatives. When you're youthful, you're a lot more ignorant to things. You don't have the experience. Right? Just like we can poke positives and negatives of each, youthfulness also has its negatives. A little bit more naive, not well-versed, not experienced, not as successful. I mean, we can go on and on. But we have to filter out a lot of these societal labels and things that are thrown at us. Well, just be young and put the cream on to look young and get the surgery. Like, dude, no. If you're 40, you're 40. If you're 35, you're 35. Now, if you look good for your age, cool. Like a lot of people will tell me, well, you know, you don't look your age or you look good for your age. So it's easy to say, look, but that's just a result of my lifestyle and how I take care of myself. I don't have amazing genetics. I'm just in shape. I'm hydrated, right? And there you go. I take care of myself. So if I do look good, again, that's relative because some people will tell me I look like shit. But that's a result of my hard work and dedication and my lifestyle. So I, I want to challenge that. What the hell is the obsession with being young? Dude, I love being my age. It's amazing. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And as I get older... This is getting cooler and cooler. Like I'm enjoying it more and more and like looking forward to the next birthday and stuff when everyone else repeats their 30th birthday like 20,000 times. Now I get it. It's different for men and women. Like as a woman, you kind of do have to get your life together quicker, right? You have that window of having kids and all that. So from a, a survival and replication standpoint, that's different. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about in general. I'm talking about up here because from a dating standpoint and life standpoint, that's a separate issue. I'm talking about just your mental in your space. Because when we start accepting these labels, we, we add this extra pressure. Well, I want to be young. And then you start doing weird stuff. You start engaging in activities and things and you go down rabbit holes that you really shouldn't because then it becomes an obsession. And then it's never good enough. And that spirals into addiction and a bunch of other issues that people have. Like look at all the people that have, like I've seen it, right? Because I'm in real estate. And I'll go to these conferences and these networking events, and there's ladies there in their 40s and 50s who have gotten so much surgery. When they smile and they emote, like you don't, see, nothing moves. 
It's just this operated thing where it's like you can kind of see their eyes shift a little bit. Like they get a little brighter when they smile, but like the rest of the face is numb because it's been so operated on. It can't even move like a normal face. And I just sit there almost like in disgust. I'm like, but it comes back to the point that I just said. It's this obsession with wanting to be younger. You ain't fooling anybody, dude. Who cares? If anything, as an older person, you have the leg up on the younger person. Why are we trying to be like them? You know, and isn't it funny that that's the way life is, is everyone always wants to go the opposite way. The people that were, that are rich want to act like they're poor, right? And then vice versa. The people who are poor would pray and do anything to have money. The younger people are like, I can't wait to be older. Then the older people, oh, I want to be younger again. We have everything backwards here, dude. And really all it is, is everybody hits a point like that. Because what you haven't experienced yet or where you're not yet, you have this innate desire just to be there or experience the opposite side. It's almost like choose your own adventure. That's just a part of being a human being I've experienced. What I just said, I don't know if it's backed by science, but that's kind of what I see. Same thing with the midlife crisis, right? For a lot of people, they hit that point because no matter which path you chose, you still would have thought, what if I did something else? That possibility is always going to be there. And our mind is weird the way it works. So everyone would go through that. Now, labeling it a midlife crisis and all that I think was wrong because that has a negative connotation, but the point still stands. You get what I'm saying, right? So as we explore this topic a little bit deeper, understand that a lot of this has to do with your perspective and how you filter things. Like 100%. And a lot of that's going to be directly correlated to and influenced by who you have in your proximity, what you listen to, what you've read, what your beliefs are and your philosophies and your identity. If your identity and values and beliefs, which are at the core, are all about being young and hot and sexy and you're 45, you better make a change. Right? There's no stagnant state in the universe. Every day we're older and we look different. It's just the reality. That's just the reality. The next one is this. As we get older, people t tend to get more stuck in their ways. So one of the little hacks you can do to age with more grace is to be wary of that and have the awareness to identify that and then make sure that you're always doing things to kind of push you out of your comfort zone, but to also double check to make sure you're not getting too stuck in your ways. Like imagine uh, for those of you who are maybe my age or a little bit older, think of your parents and when technology was really advancing and like computers came out. I know I still know older people who refuse to use like phones and computers. Well, it gets to a point where that becomes a problem because now it's so assimilated into society that technically, yeah, you could function without it, but it becomes annoying. Your, your grandpa, right? He goes out, he doesn't have a phone. What if something happens to him, right? He can't just stop and, you know, go to the pay phone and call you. He's probably too old to even remember your number in case of an emergency or something, right? But we can't get so stuck in our patterns and our ways that we become so infinitely rigid because that's typically you know something that comes with age we become more ingrained in a pattern because we've done it for 5 10 15 20 years so make sure that you're always doing things to push you out of your comfort zone if your career or your personal life isn't doing that that way you're constantly stretching and and adding the stimulus to yourself but also double check with yourself regularly am i getting too ingrained in a certain thought pattern or or a diet or this is it becoming dogma right is it becoming too like restricting. And a lot of times we do that. I remember, you know, my grandpa, on my dad's side. Uh, sorry, on my mom's side, right? Jose Luis, very stuck in his ways, very stubborn. Now, I'm sure he wasn't that stubborn when he was a kid, but as he got older, it became more and more ingrained. And we would kind of get frustrated at him because he wanted things done a certain way, no matter what, even if it didn't make sense. And we associate that typically with people who are older. So that's something that you can do to kind of counteract that because again we do get stuck in our ways and we want it our way and we want it this way and we want it now right so it, it, it requires a little bit more humility right here's another one when it comes to to aging with grace i think a lot of people as they age and this might not apply to everybody but i think a good amount of people because they're older they feel like they're entitled to certain things just because they're older like you should listen to me because i'm older now i agree that we should respect our elders for sure but when somebody's overbearing with that, I don't agree with it. So if you want to age with grace, I would highly recommend you not adopt that kind of attitude where I'm older, so I'm the shit and you need to listen to me. Almost to where like you try to impose the seniority on people. Instead of just being the wise sage who just drops bombs on people and people come to you, they become that overbearing one 
right? That thinks they're the shit and thinks their shit don't stink. I'd recommend you stay away from that too because I've seen some people fall down that path. Now, it's kind of a side point because I don't think that's everybody, but I did want to make a note of that one because I've seen it. I've seen it enough to where I, I feel like I had to address that one specifically, okay? Here's another one, right? You want to age with grace? From a physical standpoint, your body is incredible. Again, I've recently learned the full splits. I'm doing advanced calisthenics and I'm getting to the point now where I think within the next year, I'm going to be doing some crazy shit. And I'm six foot two, 200 pounds. I'm not built for that sport. I'm way too big to be a calisthenics athlete or gymnastics athlete. And I'm doing some wild shit. Even at the gym today, some guy's like, oh my God, I can't believe because he was the same size as me. I can't believe you're doing that stuff. You want to age with grace from a physical standpoint, stay limber, stay active, and keep pushing yourself because you will severely delay the decay of the body and of the muscle and the atrophy and all that if you stay active and you have a good diet and you really take care of yourself and get good sleep and all the basic stuff that we talk about. That just gets neglected as we age. We move less. What do they say? Like 95% or more of adults after age 30 or 25 will like never do a full sprint again. That's crazy. I sprint at least once or twice a week. I'm going to go to, uh, to boxing tomorrow. And after my boxing workout, I'm going to go outside in the little back alley behind the gym and I'm going to run some sprints, even if it's only five or six, right? But that keeps me young, right? No one, no one that plays sports with me or hangs around me thinks I'm my age. Everybody thinks I'm five or 10 years younger. And it's, again, it's not because I hit the genetic lottery. I just take care of myself. And the physical prowess and the physical aspect of it is very important for me. Because that's what creates what people call the feeling, right? My body and my capabilities physically right now at 38 years old do not feel like, oh, man, when I think back to 28 or 25, I've had injuries, serious surgeries and injuries. So to a degree, yes, somewhat limited. But I can't say that I feel bad now or I feel a lot slower or less explosive and all that. I don't. I'm sure I am a little bit, but not anything significant. I feel amazing. I sleep good, right? I'm mentally sharp. I keep learning more and more. So this side of it is, is, is so important, right? And I don't want to make this video too long, but these are just some points. And I may expand upon this and do a part two. But when it comes to getting older and embracing the title of being the elder, the OG or whatever it is, or just, you know, being middle age, right? I guess because I'm technically now entering middle age or I just entered it at like 35 or whatever. Embrace it. Right? Because again, us denying it or fighting it and this and that, it, like it doesn't change anything. We're still there. It's still a reality. Right? And if you fight it and resist it, it just gets worse. But if you embrace it and you view it from the proper standpoint, you use it as an advantage and you can tap into it for really what it is. And I appreciate it and I like it and I'm enjoying it. And you can do the same, my friends. You can do the same. So stop looking at it with this neg negative stigma and thinking that life is over. No, it's only just beginning. Okay? You guys need any help from me? All my links are in the description. I offer a ton of like sales coaching and consultations and all that stuff too. Um, so if you need anything, hit me up. All right. See you guys.